Thank you very much for taking the time today to view our video. Before we begin, we'd like to take a moment to introduce ourselves. There are many aspects to 9.connect, but it boils down to the fact that we're a PCB-centric organization. We believe and focus on the PCB due to the fact that it is truly the center point of all electronic design. That's where our expertise lies. We provide services not only in the PCB layout, but in design consulting as well. And during the technical portion of this webinar, you will see this expertise in motion. We are now the exclusive North American instructors for Altium Designer. We host 100 trainings throughout the year across North America, and we are excited to bring these trainings closer to you. In addition to our services, we are also a value-added reseller for a number of PCB-related software companies. And just to note, each company has been presented in past webinars. So if you're interested in them, please contact us or check out our website. And by the way, we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for these tools as well. For more information on our services and past webinars, please contact us. Our information is listed in the description below. Thank you for giving us a moment of your time, and please enjoy the presentation. We're going to discuss documentation, and it's a two-part uh, seminar today, webinar today. I'm going to talk briefly about the OutJob file within Altium Designer, and then after that I'm going to turn the uh, baton over to uh, Ray Fugit, who is a senior apps engineer, actually a field application engineer for Downstream, and he's going to show you a tool called Blueprint, which takes things above and beyond what Altium can do. But for now, let's do a little bit of a technical presentation on the OutJob file. I have that open in front of me right now. And you may be familiar with this. If you're not, it's something you definitely want to take a look at. The OutJob file has been in Altium Designer for quite a long time, but it's gone through different iterations as they improve it. And this, I think, is the third iteration of it. So it's been in there for about six or seven years, but they've improved it over time. So what is the OutJob file anyways? Well, it's a batching file. And that may be a term you haven't heard in a while because we don't normally batch things anymore. Uh, that's kind of those things that we do, uh, you know, we did 20, 30 years ago uh, when we were doing mainframes and we had to basically queue up things in order to get them through the, the processor. But this is a batching file because it basically allows Altium to queue everything up and produce these output files so that you don't have to keep going into the file menu of PCB and to uh, have to say, well, create the Gerbers, well, create the bill of materials, create the... Uh, ODB++, whatever you have to create, you don't have to keep going in there and separately running these things. Because number one, you're going to forget to do something. And number two, if you've got to change something, you're going to have to go through that process again. And that's just a lot of administrative work for, uh, for what you need to do to get things done. And Altium can do all of that in one file for you. So how do you create this? Well, the first thing we do is we go up to File, and we can say New. All right? And then we go over here to Out Job, uh, job pardon me, Out Job or output job file. We call it output job files. We also tend to call them by its extension, which is the dot out job file. So that's how I normally refer to it as well. But that's where we find it. And if we create it over here, this is what it's going to look like. So Altium has basically taken all those files that you can create in the FPGA editor, the schematic editor, and the PCB editor, and they basically made them available for you over here in one of these seven categories. And there's other ones that they've created too that you wouldn't normally find very easily. So, for example, if you need a net list, it's just a matter of clicking on any one of these arrows here, all right, and it will show you the entire list of those net lists that it can create, all right. Or for documentation, if we click over here, you can see all of those different uh, things that you can normally create in the schematic, FPGA, or PCB editors. And if there are things that aren't available because they're not here open, then it's going to just gray it out. So I don't have any C or C++ files open, so as a result, uh, they're being grayed out. But I do have a PCB, so it allows me to create something like a composite drawing if I want to do that. Now, for each one of these things, they used to give you an option, either a generic option, like in this case, either PCB document, or it gives you a very specific file that you can use. Now, what's neat about this is that if you use a generic term, Altium knows that you're trying to do a, a composite on a PCB document. But if you do this and you save this off, you can reuse this again and again, not only for your colleagues, but also for future projects down the road. Okay. So I'd highly encourage you to consider using a very generic name so that you can reuse this outjob file over and over again. Okay. And then there's other things that they provide in here as well. So your assembly stuff, for example, your uh, fabrication stuff, uh, your Gerbers and your NC drill files and so on and so forth. Even for reports over here, okay, for your bill of materials, 
And the one I like a lot that they've added here is the validation outputs because you can also create a report for your electrical rule check and your design rule check. Because a lot of times we run those things, but we don't keep a report of it. But hey, you know, if we're going to send this off or we're going to archive this, these are good reports to have run so that when someone looks at it, they can, say, they can see the state of that project when you did that. Okay? In addition to that, they also have some export stuff over here. All right, so primarily those things are going to go into an MCAD tool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this one over here, which is one that I've set up a little bit already. And what do we need to do in order to set something up? Well, we basically look in the right category that we want to find things. And over time, you'll get a feel for what, where things are located. Most of them are going to probably be in the documentation, assembly, and fabrication area. But again, just click on that little arrow, and you get a good idea of what's in there. All right? So. If I create one, for example, and I can duplicate them, if I create a composite here, I'll just add it in, and I can change the name of this, okay, so they allow me to do this, and that's good because I can create uh, files here in a few minutes that uh, re reflect this name, so I can call it Composite Drawing 2, all right, for example, or any name I want to give it. Here's my data source, so I just have to tell it where it's at, and again, I can change this kind of on the fly, all right, and then lastly, for the output description over here, I ultimately have to get back to the configuration window. All right, and Altium provides those configuration windows for you the way you've always seen them. So if I go to the configure, configuration for the print uh, manager, for example, okay, let's bring that up. And here it is. And it's very similar to the ones that you've seen all the time in the PCB document. And here's just another example for you. Here's the Gerber file. All right, same thing that you would have seen. So Altium's not creating any new setups over here, no new dialogues for you, okay? And so we've got that over here. Now the question that may come up to your mind is, okay, that's fine and dandy. You tell me the files I want. You tell me where the configuration managers are. And now, well, how do I get these into the directory? And Altium does that through these things called containers. Well, what's a container? Well, Altium uses this term not to, it doesn't want to call them a directory because it's not a directory. But they use this term that's called a container because it, it, they, it is somewhat of a directory, but it's not. And really the best term I think you could use for it is really what I call a distiller. It's taking information from Altium and putting it in the right format to get it into your file structure. So if I was to rename this, I wouldn't call it a container. I'd call it a distiller. Okay. Now, there's three different types of containers in Altium Designer. And I'll, let me go through each one of these very briefly. The first one is the PDF. So basically you're saying take these files over here and put this into a PDF format. Okay. The second one that they've got over here is the video. All right. And the only one that I know of that does the video is this one right over here. So you just basically go into your documentation output and you declare that you want to have a video of it. Okay. Now you don't create the video over here. You create the video in the PCB document. I'll show this in just a moment. Okay. But once you've done that, you basically tell Altium where it is. And you go to configuration. Actually, pardon me. Go to this one up here. And we go to configuration, and there it is. It's located. All right. Now, let's go over here to my design. So I brought this one up because it has a really good example here. Oops, I had this up a little bit earlier on. So here's an example of the Bluetooth Sentinel. It's the one that they provide with Altium Designer 14. Okay. And if you want to ever make a video, you put it into the 3D mode, and you go over here to the PCB, and you bring up this thing called the PCB. 3D Movie Editor, and make sure you are in the 3D mode or it's going to complain about it. You'll see a big red lettering here that says you got to be in the 3D mode. And then from here, you just create the movie. So you can go over here and you can create a new movie. Okay? So you just click on New. You can give it a title so you can find it in the out job. All right? We've already got one here. In fact, Altium's already created a very good one for this. I'm going to delete this one over here. And then you create the key frames. Well, how do you create the key frame? Well, what you do is you actually maneuver it to where you want it to be. Okay, you zoom it in, zoom it out, you give it the angle that you want, and then you say, hey, add a new keyframe in there. So I'm going to do that right here, so I'm going to add this in, and then you can give it a time duration in which it's going, to, um, uh, it's going to sit in that particular location. And then from there, you can run it. And what's nice about this is that Altium is going to automatically zoom it and move it around and spin it around as it's trying to go from one keyframe to the next. And you'll see that happen here right now when I play it. So when I press this here, You'll see it's on key one over here. The duration here speeds it up or slows it down. Okay, here's the next keyframe, and then it's going to move on to the, the other ones as you're moving along over here. All right. 
And that's what you can do over here. And of course, now with the Flex Ridge, it makes it very easy to make these kind of things uh, so that you can provide these to others. And this is really useful for those people who have to work with Flex Rigid and need to know the order of the bend. Okay. Now let's go back over to our job file. If I want to actually create this into a dot uh, wave file, uh, what I need to do, actually let's go to this one here because this has got it set up already. So I need to basically tell Altium that I want to make this video. And you'll notice that each one of these containers over here will have bubbles associated with them. And so I do need to link whatever I've got over here to the right container. And Altium's kind of smart about that because it's not going to um, it's not going to allow you to connect up things that just can't be done. So for example, this video over here can't be added to a PDF and it's not added to this folder structure, which I'll talk about in just a minute. What we need to do over here is we basically need Altium saying, look, if you're going to use this, it's associated to a video as opposed to a PDF, which has its own radials, and the folder structure, which has its own radials. So Altium's smart about that. It knows which it knows which one of these files are associated to which one of these uh, containers over here. So in order to do it, I got to enable it by clicking on it. And now this thing has been enabled. If I press generate content, it will create the WAV file uh, automatically for me. All right. So that's how the, the video aspect works of this. The last aspect of it is the folder structure. And the reason I talk about this one at the end is because the PDF and the video stuff are they're very specific. If you're going to create a PDF, you know you're creating a PDF. If you're creating a video, you know you're creating a video. Really, the folder structure is everything else. Okay, so if you're creating Gerbers, it's going to put in the Gerber format. If you're creating bill of material, it's going to be put in Excel or .csv uh, format. Effectively, what the folder structure is putting in anything else other than a video or a PDF. That's the easiest way to look at the folder structure. Okay, and again, if I want to add certain things to it, I can just click on the button and I'll enable it in there. And this is the order in which they're going to be generated. Okay? So that's how these, each of these are going to work. So if I want to do this, I've got to click on this one, and it will generate all those things that are specific to the ones I've got connected to it. PDF, same thing. Video, same thing as well. And I also have the ability to create other containers. However, they've got to be in one of the formats that you see above. So you can't create, for example, a Microsoft, dot, uh, Microsoft document one, for example. You've got to create a PDF, or you've got to create a video, or you've got to create a folder structure one. But you're probably asking, well, why do I need to do that? Well, it depends on how you want to structure this. So let's go over here to the PDF for a moment. And I'm going to click on uh, Change, because this is going to basically bring up its properties. And what you see over here is the exact same thing that you would see whether you open the video or the folder structure. The only difference is if you click on Advanced, this bottom area will change, because this is specific to uh, PDFs, okay? as opposed to if I go over here to the folder structure and I click on Change, this will, the top will look the same, okay? and it'll come up here in a minute. But you'll see that the bottom over here actually is different. So it's got different options here. But the top generally remains the same, which is good because it makes everything very uniform. So if I want to change this, let's go to the PDF and let's talk about this because this is where I think a lot of the confusion reigns. And this is why I struggle with that concept of container because these things over here are file names, they're directories, and they're kind of directives that you're giving to Altium Designer. As a matter of fact, I call these things elements. And each one of these things, each one of these containers contains these four elements. And so let's go through each one of those very briefly. The first one is whether or not you want to release manage or manual manage. Well, they added this one in, this release manage for the vault. Okay? Uh, as opposed to manually manage, where you're basically going to save this, you're, you're running this stuff, you're not using the vault, you're just trying to get this over to a file directory system, you can click on this, and it gives you a lot more control over where this is going to be placed. Most people just leave this alone as is. Altium is going to automatically put it into your project directory anyways, even if you don't mess with this over here. But if you want a lot more control over this, you can tell it another directory altogether. Okay? The second one is what I'll call them the main, sub, the main subdirectory as to where this is going to go. So you've got a couple of options here. The container name and the container type for PDF is going to remain the same. Now, if we were doing this on folder structures, they give you some other options here. Uh, you don't even have to have a subdirectory. You can just dump everything into the project directory all its own. Or you can give it its own name. Or if you want to timestamp it, you can use one of Altium's project parameters. Okay? So you've got a number of different options that you can use over here when you're creating the subdirectory. And one of the things you may have noticed over here, like say, for example, if I take current time and I press done, they have this thing that's called the preview. And the preview here is going to change up as you're doing these things. So you don't have to generate these and then go into the output and try, try to determine whether or not um, 
and this is going to work or not, okay? It, it, you, because that, that's going to take a lot of time. That could take easily, you know, 10, 15 minutes of your time. What this is doing is saying, this is how it's going to look when we're done with it. And I'll actually show you guys this, because I've already run it, um, so you can see how this looks in the end. But it's, this is how the folder structure is going to be set up. This is the names that they're going to use. This is even the, uh, the names of the files that they're going to use. And that's what you're seeing here. So this one's the main directory, which you see is called PDF. I didn't change the radial on it. The second one over here is a subdirectory if you want to further define it. Okay, you don't have to have it, uh, but you can further define it if you want. And again, same options that you're seeing here. The only difference is that they're giving what's called an output name and an output type. And what that means is Alpine's asking, do you want me to use the names that you've got over here, or do you want me to use the names that you got over here? That's really what they're asking for when they give you those options. And again, look at the previews because you've got a good feel for it. And then lastly over here, is how you want to handle the naming conventions of this. Now, unlike the folder structure where you really need to have separate files, they give you the option to glum everything together in the PDF as well. So that's what they've got over here. They're just basically trying to make it as easy as possible for you to do this. All right, so let me press uh, Done, and I'll press OK. All right, and if I want to execute it at this point, I get two options. Either I just click on Generate Content, and away it goes. All right, and it will basically take this file, put it through the distiller, create the PDF, second, third file, just puts it in the order based on the commands I gave up here, and it's really good to go. The other option that they've got over here is this thing called Generate and Publish, and that's really important as well. And I'm going to show you this because sometimes you don't want to necessarily keep this local to your directory. Sometimes you want to put this available to people on the outside, and maybe you guys have uh, an iCloud, uh, uh, some location, right, some place on the cloud that you want to put these things. Uh, and we can do that by clicking on Manage Publishing. And Altium can link to those things through its preferences. Okay, and so in the preferences, it just basically, that's what it's bringing up is the preferences. Under Data Management Publishing Destination, you can add a destination. Some of them they know by default, like Amazon S3, Box.com. If you already have these set up, it's very easy because Altium already knows how to interact with those. Others may require a little bit more effort. But nevertheless, they give you the ability to publish to locations that you don't normally interact with in Altium Designer. And as one person told me, one of the biggest problems with documentation issues is that if you save this to your local directory and then you send it to someone in email, you now have got duplication. Because someone's got one copy, you've got another copy, and the moment someone makes a modification, you're out of sync with each other, as opposed to publishing it to a central location where everybody pulls from the same location. Okay, so just another thing to keep in mind here as well. All right. So there's a number of other different features I'd love to spend some time with over here. Unfortunately, my time is kind of short. Um, if you're ever curious or want more information about it, we certainly do offer the, co uh, the coaching services uh, so that if you want to get into uh, more of the manufacturing things and what things need to be set up and so on and so forth, we can certainly help you with that.